Hello and welcome to another video and good morning from Frankfurt Airport here in Germany. Today I've got a real treat. I'm reviewing a new airline for the channel. It's an airline I've not flown before and I'm very excited. China Airlines is on the itinerary today. It's an airline which has got so many great reviews from other flight reviewers and I can't wait to try it. We're heading over 12 hours to Taipei in business class on one of their 777s. I can't wait, let's get straight into it. We start our trip today airside at the Priority Lounge, which is the one you can use if you've got a China Airlines ticket in business class. Don't be fooled by the name. This is a pretty basic third party lounge and after I was eventually let in, it was a bit of a disappointment. Sure, it's better than sitting in the terminal, but it's not the nicest lounge you'll ever use. It feels a bit like the canteen in a head office somewhere. So as you can see, the airline provided lounge isn't up to much, but I've got a much better option and it's just next door. My priority pass allowed me to use the Prime Class Lounge. Prime Class is a Turkish company which runs pretty decent lounges across Europe. And this was much better. With a full service bar, better food options and a more relaxing ambience. And somehow the coffee machine managed to give me a cup of hot milk. I think that cock up's probably on me, but I definitely made the right decision to use this lounge. And yes, there is a shower suite here, unlike the priority lounge. By the way, if you do find yourself at Frankfurt Terminal 2 and can't get into a lounge, there is a shower by the Japan Airlines Lounge. The cost, six euros, and you'll need cash for that, in my experience. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning virtual private network or VPN. Now, there are a ton of great reasons to use Surfshark, from leveraging lower prices online or improving your online security. I travel a lot and Surfshark is so important to me because it helps me bounce my device's location to where is convenient for me. We don't have time to get into every single use case of this amazing tool, but we'll start with just one, unblocking blocked content. It's so frustrating when I'm in the UK and I want to look at, for example, a cool news story I saw on Twitter. But whoa, this site is from the US and doesn't comply with GDPR. That's really annoying, but a quick flick of the switch to switch my location to inside the US and hey presto, the site now thinks I'm in the US and I can browse away happily. The same thing applies to BBC iPlayer. If I've traveled outside the UK, it can be hard to get content to work because of licensing issues. That's again, really annoying. But if I set my location as inside the UK, here we go. I can now access BBC iPlayer, get right inside and watch videos to my heart's content, stay up to date with the news back home and watch my favorite shows. It's an incredible tool, a real Swiss army knife. And what's more, there's a special deal for you, my viewers. Not only is it insanely cheap at less than a cup of coffee per month, you'll also get three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN by using code WINGINIT. All right, nearly time for the exciting moment of boarding. But before I do so, a quick interlude from me where I tell you exactly how much this cost, how I paid for this flight, and I'll give you a brief explainer about China Airlines. For this trip, I used my Flying Blue Miles, booked on klm.com. A one-way trip cost me 79,500 miles and 285 euro in fees. On the face of it, a fairly average value redemption, but this is by far the most cost-effective way to book one-way tickets. A return business class cash fare would set you back about two and a half thousand pounds, with a one-way costing twice that. I'm lucky to have had the miles available. Oh, and China Airlines isn't from China, by the way. Well, it is, sort of. Now, this channel isn't a place for Asian geopolitics, but basically, there are two Chinas. The People's Republic of China, or PRC, the big one we all call China, and there's the officially named Republic of China, more commonly known in the West as Taiwan. Airlines from China PRC include 
Air China and China Southern, among many, many others. You'll see them flying to Beijing, Shanghai and other Chinese cities. But we'll be dealing only with an airline from Taiwan today. China Airlines from Taiwan will take me to Taipei and the start of a round-the-world adventure aboard a Boeing 777-300ER just like this. All right, here we go. We're off to Taipei, Taiwan with China Airlines. Here we go. It's business class. Hello. Hi. It's <laughs> Thank you so much. This way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Here is the beautiful business class on the China Airlines 777. It's split over two cabins, with all seats having direct aisle access in a one-to-one -one reverse herringbone layout. I've got the very last seat in the second cabin today, 23A. Middle seats are the best for people traveling together who like each other more than they like windows. And directly behind us is premium economy, twice as dense as business class with its 242 layout. The front row of this looks like it has amazing legroom, by the way. One thing that struck me about the decor is I really preferred it in the flesh and the video here doesn't do it justice. There's some nice patterning and plenty of false wood effects going on and they're all accompanied by a nice soft relaxing color scheme. It's a very comfortable place to spend 12 hours. The purser was so helpful too, pointing out all the parts of the seat, even though I'm hardly a newbie when it comes to this sort of thing. However, there was no drink service on the ground, which is definitely not the norm on long haul business class sectors these days. Anyway, it's time to go back to Asia. Let's fly. So the seat, this is a regular super diamond seat. It's very private. And as you can see, you won't be overlooking any other passengers. There's a really good reason this seat is popular amongst airlines. It's a solid all rounder. There's plenty of storage, multiple charge points, a really good 18 inch touch screen TV with remote control and intuitive controls, which will be accessible to even the least experienced flyer. It's a solid quality seat and of course lies flat and makes a six foot six inch bed. The finishes are lovely and this soft decorative lamp is the star of the show. However, there are no individual air vents on board. 
don't forget to subscribe click that button and touch that bell and you'll be notified of all my future video uploads and join a growing community of hundreds of thousands of other trip report enthusiasts just like you China Airlines menu is viewable online prior to departure and comes in a fairly old school format. There are both Western and locally inspired dishes, although none of the options seem to stretch what's possible at 40,000 feet. It's still a decent menu though, and what's more, you can pre-order online for both the lunch and breakfast options so you won't miss out on your first choice. Like many carriers, China Airlines serves wasabi peas and nuts as a snack, but curiously from a packet, not a bowl. It seems a little bit cheap. However, when lunch arrived, it did look great. This is my starter. Grilled prawn with quinoa, pretzel bread, and a side salad. This is followed by a strange truffle and celery soup, which I think we can fairly say is an acquired taste. I'm not really a big fan of either truffle or celery. So as you can tell, I went for the Asian option with my lunch today. Really do like the look of the Western options, but I always feel obliged to try new things. And this chicken dish um, is no exception. So let's dive in and see what that's like, eh? The Hainanese chicken was fine. I'd give China Airlines a six out of 10 for the food. It was all just fine, but nothing about it was memorable. And this was definitely one of the less inspired menus I've seen on such a long flight. Singapore Airlines it ain't, but it's worth saying the bar is pretty high when it comes to Far Eastern Airlines and 6 out of 10 is by no means a bad score. One area China Airlines did surprise in was with the amenity kit. I was not expecting a luminous North Face bag. It's really high quality and yes, I did keep this for my own use. The kit contained everything you'd expect, and these eye shades are lovely and soft, by the way. As we jetted east, I settled in to watch some Taiwanese content on the entertainment screen and generally kicked back. These slippers were also lovely, by the way, and for once, a pair of airline slippers that actually fit. I'm afraid these also fell accidentally into my backpack before leaving. The bed is very comfortable and a mattress topper is provided, which really helps with this. However, for once, I really struggle to get off to sleep. This is quite an early overnight flight and a combination of not being tired enough and the opportunity to spot some huge Indian cities from the sky meant I took my time getting away. The galley area contains a snack section which is free for all business class passengers to use and I spied something special in the drinks cabinet. A rare Johnny Walker Blue Label, about 200 euro a bottle. So of course I ordered one of these as a nightcap. I'll sleep tonight.
After a few hours sleep, I woke up and, having not found anything too great by way of in-flight entertainment, used the Wi-Fi for a bit, which was reasonably priced and the speeds were acceptable. Breakfast was pretty strange and definitely an Asian interpretation of a Western breakfast. Although, to be fair, I'm sure we absolutely ruin a lot of Asian dishes in the West too. I think travel is all about trying new things and finding out not just how you interpret other cultures, but how other cultures interpret you. Overall, I was surprised at my experience. I've seen China Airlines get rave reviews, and I didn't see too much in the way of anything that blew my mind here. But still, for a one-way mileage redemption, this was fair value, and I would definitely redeem miles with them again in the future. Next up, a real gem of an airline, and something that really did blow me away. Starlux. You'll want to be subscribed for that. Until then, don't forget to go to surfshark.deals forward slash it for three extra months free of Surfshark VPN. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.